This video is sponsored by Fide, a Catholic technology alternative to big tech companies. Fide provides email, calendar services, file, and collaborative options, forms for individuals, families, businesses, parishes, and nonprofit operations. Check out the link in the description box for more information. About a week or so ago, I presented the bit from Malachi Martin on the fake Sister Lucia the replacement of Sister Lucia, the imposter Sister Lucia, a long time sore point among traditional Catholics that had a topic that had kind of languished really because no one had really investigated it. And then Sister Lucy Truth as an organization appeared on the board just a few years ago and started putting resources into examining the question. And what I have for you here is an excerpt from my conversation with Dr. Peter Hofnowski, <laughs> Apologies, I can barely pronounce anything anymore. Um, he is the person behind Sister Lucy Truth, and he's the foremost expert on this question. And the full talk is available for you to uh, watch in the pinned comment below will be links to where you can find an embedded player to hear the full conversation on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and several other of the ma all the major podcasting platforms, Podbean and a few others. There'll be an embedded player, basically. You go to the link there, it'll take you to my sources blog, which has an embedded player in the post for it. Or you can watch it over on Rumble. It'll help me out more if you do the audio-only side, honestly. The uh, Rumble is barely usable from my end of things, so I don't like posting things there. I really don't. But for the audio-only side, it's available there. And the audio-only side is a great backup place to follow me in case something should happen here. Um, be, and the reason I'm not putting the full thing up on YouTube is it does get into some pretty touchy things, especially towards the end. But you'll get a f good interview, a good idea about what to expect from the next few minutes worth of this, uh, these excerpts that I'll play for you. So with that, I hope you enjoy this. And let me know if you want more interviews with more interesting figures in the Catholic world, because I have several ideas for who I should talk to in the next few weeks if I can't, if I can pull it off. So let me know what you think about this in the comments, please. And uh, fear, feel free to share this on social media. Thanks. God bless. So there's sort of, according to the, just the timeline, there's various sets of photos. There's the early childhood photos, which we designate as A. There's mm -hmm. the photos from uh, the 1940s through the 1950s, and we designate those as B. And then there's the photos from May 13th, 1967, and those are C. And then there's the photos of the woman after, who appeared in 1982 and after. Um, and we simply said to all the experts, whether it was those using facial recognition technology or whether it was forensic artists who are, you know, specialists and hold world records in this field, or it's maxillofacial surgeons, or dentists, or um, uh, uh, plastic surgeons, uh, or, or super facial recognizers. That's a new, that's a new uh, specialty now, super facial recognizers. Apparently there's people who are in such a state, an extreme state, that they can't recognize a face at all. They meet someone and then they forget them completely. It's a special condition mm -hmm. where, well, there's the other extreme where they're called superficial recognizers, where they can remember faces uh, from decades and decades and decades back or can, re can t consistently recognize uh, faces that are presented to them hmm. or analyze faces in a scientific way uh, with, with much greater exactitude than the average person would hmm. be able to muster. So we, we called upon a superficial recognizer who was the best in uh, Australia. She, that was her field of activity. She's now in New Zealand. Um, and she worked with the University of New South Wales on these projects, these superficial recognition projects. So we hired her. We hired a man to analyze the the written work of Sister Lucy. And um, 
in all the years, the notebooks, the 40s, the, the, a letter from 1969, a letter from 1980. And then, you know, as we went through this, the, con the continual message coming to us from these experts was that the woman, the, the woman who, the child, who we know as the visionary of Fatima, and then the nun, of the 1930s and 40s and 50s, the Dorothea nun and then the Carmelite nun, were not the same person as the woman who appeared on May 13th, 1967, nor w w were, was that real Sister Lucy the same woman that appeared after 1982. So, so there was different women and and one was obviously replacement for the other and um we we you know went a step further because there's all you got to get every little thing judged and analyzed was the woman of 1967 who appeared with paul the sixth at fatima the same woman that appeared with john paul the <laughs> second in 1982 and expert after expert has said that they were the same woman. So we're dealing really with one replacement, one imposter. And uh, the evidence came in over the course of the of about four years and um, just confirming from all different angles, even mathematically, a mathematical analysis of the various parts of the face and their relationship to each other. And uh, some th and some things don't change over time, like the distance, the distance, the distance of your eyes being, you know, as correct. they are set in the skull, don't tend to change over time. Right, right. exactly. And uh, so many the film and, and all the different uh, different aspects of the face, and um, you know, and and they looked at this, they looked at this, and they took everything into consideration, because for example, we know that in 1948. Because she had bad teeth, but for whatever reason, you know, uh, all uh, all Sister Lucy's teeth were extracted, and she was given dentures. You know, that was a seems like an extreme uh, solution to that, a problem, but that is an extreme solution to that to is problem. an extreme, and which makes you wonder why did that happen? You know, in light of what happened later, but all her teeth these teeth were teeth were extracted. She was given dentures. Uh, so the experts knew about this and they took this into consideration and they said, it doesn't make it less likely that it's a different person. It makes it more likely that it's a different person <laughs> because dentures don't do this to the face. So, fact, the, so, the obje so an objection somebody would raise to this is, or maybe not an objection, but a question that they would have is, were these experts Catholic? Or were they Fatimists? Were they, you know, really, you know, the types of people who spend more time reading up on the message of Fatima and all the intricate details about it than they do, you know, practicing their faith or doing other things? Are these like, are these yeah. the kind of people who get really wrapped up in this stuff? No, they they, they were experts who knew nothing about Fatima. Okay. I think so, nothing about Fatima. They weren't hired because they were Catholic because they're not Catholic. Uh, and they didn't do it because of any interest in Fatima whatsoever. They were answering a question that we posed to them, uh, which, you know, the implications they themselves didn't fully understand. Right. It's, um, no, it, ca it calls us to a, I mean, it's a, a wake-up call. It's a wake-up call. First of all, every people have to inform themselves. Like, w what happened? Mm -hmm. What happened? What is the evidence that something happened? Look mm -hmm. at the evidence with your own eyes. That's the best judge. All right. Mm -hmm. We have scientific everything you'd want, but except for DNA, which one day we hope to get so <laughs> DNA evidence that would, that's going to be an accomplishment. You'll have to get, getting DNA something from sister, getting something from either of the women will be difficult. Probably be tough. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to be difficult. So um, what do you say, though, to the people who say that the last couple of years in the world have made them very distrustful of experts in general? I understand that with the medical well, industry right now, but like broadly speaking, I don't quite understand. Well, that. these are these are 
experts that had no agenda. All they did was answer a question that we asked, is this the same woman? Uh, and based, and you can look at the reports yourselves. They analyze, they don't talk about the theology involved in Fatima or the different groups uh, that exist now that are arguing about the Latin mass or anything. They don't talk about that at all. They talk about the nose and the, the jaw and the, you know, the relation between the eyes and the, the nose and um, the shape of hairlines and things. About. Yeah. And and the little lines in the writing, and that's what they're talking about. And they sign their names, and they say that this is what we think. This are we're putting our reputations on the line, not because we care about where anyone's going to go with it, but it's just what we find. And that's all I wanted from them. That's all I asked them to do: is what is your judgment on this?